Joining us now on the Deseret First Credit Union hotline is former NFL and BYU linebacker friend of the program, David Nixon. David, welcome to the Game Day Eve show. Hey, always great to join you guys. Of course it is. We appreciate that you say that. <laughs> <laughs> David? What, what, what I don't love is the fact that you guys just tweet out a picture of me and Keel on the 50-yard line of a picture like 10 you'll, years ago. You'll never that, live that down. That will I, never I, go away. That wasn't away. actually us, but yeah, I know what you mean. Whoever it was, I don't know. Boy, Boy Sports Nation, it's, it's killing me. That picture's got to disappear somehow. Why'd you agree <laughs> to take that picture? <laughs> well, I, we didn't really agree. It was one of those things where you're, you know, media day, people are pointing you all directions. Next thing you know, we get a picture taken of us, and it's not the most uh, pleasing picture, but, you know, it is what it is. You have a sense of humor. <laughs> That's why I like it. There it is you fantastic. Go. You understand that because we are talking about it more, it's just going to get propagated. Now people are like, what picture is Yeah, now people about? are going to go look for it more now, David. Yeah, let's move on then. <laughs> <laughs> Our Twitter question today, and I know that this is a little bit of a paradox, but what unexpected thing do you expect to happen tomorrow? Well, I, I think BYU fans will be a little frustrated with this answer, but I, I, I expect BYU the, to, to fall behind early in this game. And I say that because East Carolina is coming off uh, a game against SMU where they scored 42 straight points. They had the ball rolling. They kind of found their secret sauce in James Summers, who's been the spark to this team, led them over a victory with ECU and Virginia Tech, both come from behind. So I, I, I expect ECU to continue that wave of momentum. BYU coming off kind of a lackluster effort with, with UConn. You know, nobody was thrilled. Obviously, BYU you goes on to win 30 to 10, but nobody was really thrilled with that victory and how they performed. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if there's a hangover from BYU. And then, like I said, ECU kind of rides that momentum, gets up on BYU, but eventually I think BYU wins this game at home and, and, and you know, comes around. But it uh, could be interesting first quarter. Yeah, and it'll be interesting too because I, I think James Summers is going to start the game. I don't know why you wouldn't. He's come, uh, you know, off the bench, won the last two games for you uh, when you've trailed. And he presents an inter interesting threat, David, because you played against some dual threats, uh, you know, guys that uh, got out of the pocket a lot, and that presents a certain challenge that BYU have to meet. So what's that going to be like for BYU to prepare for both, but probably lean on the James Summers' starting uh, idea, right? Yeah, it, it is tough. It really is tough as a defender. You're, you're looking at two different quarterbacks with two different skill sets, right? James Summers, more your athletic uh, running type quarterback, a guy that looks to really run first, pass second. Uh, then you've got Blake Kemp, the other quarterback who's been the majority of the starter for the, for the year, um, and, and he's more your pocket quarterback who likes to drop back. He's thrown for over 1,100 yards this season. So um, you've got two contrasting type of quarterbacks. But like you said, I, I would not be surprised if James Summer, James Summer rolls out there uh, tomorrow and is a starting quarterback and leads this ECU team out um, for the fact that he has been that spark that, that they've been looking for. And he's led them to two big victories uh, as of recently. East Carolina's defense a little bit suspect. We just pointed out that they're the 102nd ranked pass efficiency defense in the country. But that offense has been very efficient, especially on third down. How do you prepare to face the number one ranked third down conversion team in the country? Well, you just got to respect them, A. But, B, you've got to win on first and second down. We, we talk about this all the time, but especially if James Summers is the quarterback, he's not – you're, you're throwing quarterback. He only has 22 attempts on the season. Uh, he's 17 of 22. Um, so, so you have to make sure you put him in awkward positions. When I say awkward, tough, to, tough, tough uh, uh, chances in the fact that you have to make him be third and long, third and ten plus. Because if you do have a third and two, third and three, he will be uh, using his legs and he'll be lethal and probably get a first down, and much like you know, BYU used Taysom Hill in the past. So um, no question that he's a tough quarterback to defend. But when it comes to third down, the reason they are number one in the country is because they've had third manageable type um, situations and, and BYU has to force ECU into tougher type situations. It's interesting looking at East Carolina because they they match up not only on the field uh, interestingly well with BYU but their season has been similar to BYU. Do you see that same thing David? Yeah, they both got obviously both three and two records. Um, both have a great passing uh, attack. You know, BYU with 270 yards a game, ECU with 276 passing. But then both struggle with the running game. ECU's uh, 96 in the country. BYU's 114th. So both both very similar uh, type teams. Uh, but the quarterbacks, as we touched on, very different quarterbacks. Uh, when, when you talk about uh, Tanner Mangum, who's more your pocket guy, and now potentially James Summers being more of an athletic running guy. So um, you know, there are some similarities, but but also some differences. David, you said you expect ECU to get out to a quick start and ride that wave of momentum after scoring 42 consecutive in that dominating win over SMU. 
But will this be a high-scoring shootout? Will that momentum carry over through both teams? Do you expect a high-scoring shootout, or is this going to be a defensive struggle late? Well, you know, on uh, Tuesday AFR, I mentioned that my prediction is 28-17 because I thought, I, you know, I thought BYU could contain this offense after watching more tape and, and looking more at Summers and, and what he's capable of doing. I think it might be a shootout. I think it might be one of those games where, where it goes blow for blow throughout the game and, and turnovers uh, will, be, will be a huge uh, factor in the game. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I expect it to be probably a high-scoring game. Hopefully these defenses, uh, well, really mainly BYU's defense, can step up to the challenge. Um, you know, hopefully getting back some of their stud players will, will, will hopefully uh, help them out there. But um, no, no doubt that both these offenses are prolific, and it shows in the numbers. Both of them can sling the rock. Um, both defenses are struggling against the pass. So it will be interesting to see, uh, you know, obviously which team can, out, can come out on top. 539 yards of total offense for BYU last week led to 30 points. That probably should have been 40 or 50 uh, when it comes to it. What do you think will be different about the BYU offense in this game against East Carolina? Well, I think they found a weapon in, in Francis Bernard. And, and the running game, uh, there's, there's no secret that it struggled throughout the season. And I think Bernard has really come on late. Algie Brown came back from his injury and, and, and had a huge boost to the run game. Um, but more than that, uh, you know, Tanner Mangum had some tough decisions decisions he made, and, and ones that I bet he wished he could have back with the two interceptions that he threw. Um, so BYU learned from those mistakes, and he learned from those interceptions, and I, I think more than anything, they've learned from that and, and can go forward from there. And so, um, you know, hopefully that offense can learn from that uh, because this is an ECU defense and, and team that can capitalize on, on turnovers and has shown in the past that they can hang with the big boys. I mean, we, we see them barely losing to, to Florida. They beat a, a good Virginia Tech team um, and then, uh, you know, lost to a, a tough Navy team. But then you know, blew out uh, SMU after being down. So um, this is a team that can that can score on you quickly uh, because of their uh, their athletes on the field. I mean, you look at the wide receiver position with Isaiah Jones, six one, two hundred uh, type wide receiver. I mean, he's a big boy that BYU is going to have to contain. Um, you know, with thirty eight receptions and and has over twelve point four yards per catch. So this BYU's defense will have their hands full uh, come this tomorrow. Follow him at D underscore Nixon on the Twitter machine. David, great to talk to you as always. You can watch him tomorrow on Countdown to Kickoff live on BYU TV, 6.30 p.m. Eastern. We'll see you then, Dave.